Right, I'm here at Twin Lakes with Darren, the brainchild behind this match, which is Fish Off. Number 16, 16, yep. 16. Just tell us a bit about it, Darren. You know, what is the... I think the, the idea of it was that if you look at the big money events that go around the country, yeah. the fish shows and all that, we, we wanted a bit of that razzmatazz and a bit of that yeah. feeling, just bring it yeah. back to Bedfordshire, really, for Bedfordshire yeah. anglers. So um, that was the that was the really idea yeah. behind it. Obviously, the guys here at, uh, at Twin Lakes have, uh, have supported that, so we've got all the qualifiers here, and the final uh, is booked for the 29th end of July. Tw yeah, 29th yeah. of July. So there's, is there 21 in the final? Yeah. So 21 people will qualify, and then if you qualify twice, you fish, say you win it twice, there's a, a league table of your best three results of how many of these yeah. rounds you fish, and the best three at the moment, and then because three people have won it three times, yeah. are going through. So if I was to win against those, I've already qualified, then four will go through in that league table. Yeah, absolutely. So it gives a maximum of 21 anglers yes. in the final, On the day, yeah. fishing for Three and a half grand, I think it is. Yeah, that's right. Might be two and a half grand to the winner or something. Yeah. So it's a good money thing for the area, three really and good. Grand pay out on yeah, the, unbelievable. On the it's good. Yeah. And we're at Twin Lakes. They've all been held at Twin Lakes, haven't yeah. they? Yeah. Because uh, Andy and Liz have um, donated, well, not donated their water, but they've said you can hold them here. Um, and they were going to be here, there, and everywhere, but then we decided to have them just here. It's the central place for it. And Another lovely day. And it's gone down really well. As yeah. I say, two, two ways you can qualify is win the Open outright or you win it by yeah. the league. Yeah. So, yeah. And I've drawn peg 30 today. It's not been a great peg, but there's a few for there. Darren was on it Friday evening. Yeah. And yeah, had 50 right. pounds, so it could be 500 pounds on the cards. No. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I'm going to go and get set up. And uh, good luck, Darren. Yeah. Well done for running this yeah, series. Right. And uh, right. let's go and see what we can catch. Peg 30, like I said earlier. It's not the greatest of draws, but I have won matches last year on this peg. I've got three lines really. Tight over, where I will be spraying caster, fishing on the deck first and hopefully maybe catch a few shallow. But there's a lot of barbel about here and there is a silver's pool as well. Because I've already qualified, but you always want to win every match you fish, but uh, that's a comp com competitive side in anglers. Um, so I've got caster shallow over, caster below it in probably two and a half foot of water tight, and then where the spray starts coming, because it's a real pronounced shelf, going down to about six and a half foot, I'm just near the bottom of the shelf where I've got a heavier rig. I've got a 0.4 for tight over and a 0.3 um, for the shallow, and then I've got a 4 by 16 for the deeper water where I may start at that perhaps, just trying to pick up whatever's about before I go right tight over. And I've got a margin down here because the peg isn't that good. They leave out the next peg, or those in my section, is peg five. I won off that last Saturday actually. But there's a gap from peg five, Phil Spry's on that to me. So I've put my margin to me right, which I'm going to do ground bait and dead maggots. And I may catch some there Like I've got some lilies there, the only real lilies on the lake. And there are some fish under them, they've been moving, but. I don't think you catch shallow, so you might get an odd fish and that'd be a nightmare, they'd probably be in the lily, so I'm just going to ignore that, unless it's desperate. Um, so yeah, that'd be my approach, start caster over, feed the margin, not have a look on the margin for at least an hour, and then hopefully catch some barb or some carp and well, anything that's swimming really. <coughs> right, let's get some caster out there first. Put a little bit of bait on the inside. I put two lots down there, just ground bait, dead maggots and a few micros. My favourite Sonia Bait Super Crush Green. Use that everywhere, I love it. Nothing too fancy. Get that in there. Take a while to get the fish going if they are going to feed, but 
The idea is to loose feed cast to try and get them shallow. And um, fish below them first of all, try and catch the barbel, well anything that swims really. So I'm going to start on the deck tight over first of all, double caster. And hopefully get some bites sooner than later, which may be barbel I think will be the main fish I'll catch on the bottom. If I start catching carp then happy days. I've also marked my pole on my bump bowl with a tip expense I know I'm not going into the reeds. Fair look, one next door straight away. I've just seen a carp move straight away over there, which is good to see. I've got a more, oh yeah, there's fish there, floats moving backwards and forwards, but they could be barbel, like I said. But we'll, we'll find out soon. Have a look short just down the shelf now. Probably six and a half foot, well, seven foot, I say, is where I'm fishing here now. Really is deep. I expect ten jaw barbel here. If I get a bite. Seen a carp swirl over there. Now I've come off that line, typical. Just need some fish to turn up and so right at the bottom of the lake or the start of the lake, it can be cut off. Let's hope some arrive. Well, I started up the shelf, and I'm maybe 15 minutes gone. I come down the shelf, I'm starting to see a little bit of cloudy in the water over there. I've seen a couple of carp move and a swell, so maybe there might be a few over there. Might be worth having a look again, tight over on the deep rig, and then maybe have a look on the shallow rig. But there's not enough activity to really tell me there's a lot of fish, a lot of carp there. It's a fish shallow at the moment, but I missed a couple of bites on this in the deep water, which I'm sure were barbel. I keep having one of them dragonflies land on my float and sinking it, give me a false bite. <laughs> We've all had that happen. A lot of clouding up over there though. The fish that are feeding on the bottom. back over on the deeper rig. So for a little 10 minute look there though on that deeper water line, you can sometimes nick a few barbel. It can be up to sort of four pound, it can be good fish.
Oh, I see a carp there now. Might have a go, Shala. See a couple there now as well. Have a look now, Shella, on a banded caster, just to see. I've only seen a couple of fish, but you don't always see them when you can catch them, so have a look. One there now. See if we'll take my bait. See the reeds moving. Take straight away. They just look themselves when they take it. There's a short line. I'm only fishing like four or five inches deep. Back on the bottle. Get that one tape shell, that went under, but that could have been anything. <laughs> I know, and that was in the mouth as well. It's off bottom a bit further out, that one. Let's show it there's some carp there. Come on, boys. Come to you, Daddy. There's one shallow. You can see it out there. Whether that's been the same fish that's been along there all the time, I don't know, but... Took it that time. Keep it away from them lilies if I can. I've got all the ducks coming now. Got to keep that caster going through the water, else you lose your rhythm. Even though the ducks are there, the carp are not bothered about the ducks. Use a clicker because it's 12 carp to a net if you go over. You can get knocked back. Probably catch a duck now. <laughs> no, just that one there, just no head of carp there. 
I may catch a few later, but... Oh, there's another one there, then. Oh, I might go again. Yeah, another one there. Simply float sideways. Go on, take it. No, you want it. Go on. That's that one. Frightening funny this one, I thought perhaps it might have been shallow, look, but I wouldn't have thought it was shallow on fishing. Yeah, no, no I thought it was fair, but it's not. There's some fish over there now, mudding it up. And maybe I might, might catch a couple now. Oh, it's common, this is. <laughs> Tend to fight hard with the commons and the mirrors in here, but they all fight hard now, they're getting bigger. Now he's gone off. Tail on it. Oh, he's a nice fish. That's the beauty there of fishing a banded caster. Caster's still in the band, that's two fish I've had on the same caster. I'm not tight really. <laughs> As I said the ducks went right in the carp, that went straight in, and there was two or three there. Well we've been fishing an hour, I've had two carp, I've had them in the last 15 minutes. There's a few more fish there, but it's just not enough to compete for the caster when they come in. I've fed the margin twice. It's, it will get better shallow, but it probably might be the latter hour and a half, two hours of the match, because it's just not enough there at the moment. There's one little bit of reed that's annoying me there. I might put my cut on and get that out. Keeps hooking my bait up. Yeah, for the start, I went out there with my cutter, the Lee Murphy cutter, very good they are, um, and cut it clear, but I think I've just missed a little bit that's underwater. But um, we'll see how we get on. Once they move in, though, it's just, it's, it's manic. There's just not enough of them there. I think I'll go back deep and have a look for barbel, and then just keep swapping, and you know, there's a carp there again now. The ducks are there as well, but there's a cart there that may go. Obviously, I've been fishing an hour now, and what you can do, because the constant noise of the casters going in, the fish associate that with feed. And then you can get in a bit of a rhythm of don't feed, just and rattle the water with your pole tip like I'm doing now. And the fish come looking for the casters, and the only one there is yours, and you just get an instant bite quicker. But it works better when the fish are there and it's all happening. You just mix and match it. Because um, you can't slap, you're so tight. But by rattling, you're just imitating casters going in, they come looking, yours is the only one suspended, and bang, it's, it's great when that happens. 
the cart there now, but it's just trying to get him to take his feet up. Took it. You like that? I'm sure that's a car, but come at me like a barbel. You can catch barbel shallow. No, I think it is a car. I thought it might have been a barbel at first. But as you can see, you've just got to keep that feed going in. Because if I stop feeding for two or three minutes, and the fish disperse, you've got nothing to go over to. Just kind of keep that rhythm going over there. You see, that's it's doing the work now. Just being careful. Don't pull too hard. Don't pull too much out. That's the matrix 10 to 12 hollow. See, if, if you tour a brat with them, you can pull out. You don't want that. And I've lost my caster, would you believe it? I have to put another one in the band. But again, just keep that feed, little clock in your mind. Keep that loose feed going out there. And as you go out of rhythm and they're gone, you're back to square one again. I'll put another one on the band. Just gently ease it in. There we go. Now yeah, that's got a four inch hook then the float's sitting just on top of them, not on the main line. And then I've probably got five, six inches between the top of my float and the pole tip. Don't have it too less and don't too much, too much and you won't hook them when they bolt, when they take it. It's just getting a perfect balance. And just lift the pole tip, just keep it above out the water and they'll hook themselves on the tip. see a carp there. be in the middle. Got to be. Could be barbel. <laughs> See him bell waving, that's definitely a car. Well that was. Oh and there's another fell looker. They're just on they're not up in the water, they're on that shelf. I'm not to say they will come up. They've got to come up and start competing for that bait I'm feeding soon. So I'll stick with this just a little bit more. I'll get the shallow rig out. I can always go a little bit deeper, but definitely swam into it. The bite was so quick and it was on. The trouble is there's not a lot there. There's just a few. And like some of the other pegs on the lake, it's just lots of fish. There's fish there. Obviously how high it is and the weather's made it different sort of fish, but normally you'd be catching barbel. Like I'm fishing now, just on that little shelf. There's a little shelf where it drops down into the deep water. It's a real, just goes straight down, just at an angle, off of about a bit about six, seven inches flat. We'll get there.
see it comes up there, can't you? Good times. <laughs> oh, I think they're liners, but could be barbel. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've got a badge, so it's a carp down there. Maggot. It's not a barbel, it's a car, probably. Mm, yeah, it might be foul looks, but it seemed gone straight away when I lifted into it. Oh, that's in the mouth. in the top lip. Well, we've been fishing for about an hour and a half and it's not really fishing well. I've got, let's have a look, four carp on my clicker attention, a couple of little perch. But it's just to keep, I'll just keep at my plan what I'm doing because sometimes it's not big weights. I just carry on feeding this caster, just keep swapping a belt and I know at some time this match, it might be towards the end now, I may get a few shallow. But it's just, they're just not lining up at the moment. They're not lining up anywhere. No one's really bagging. Um, due to the heat, obviously, it's very hot. Like 26, 27 degrees. They have spawned here. They were spawning on Sunday, but whether they've all spawned, I don't know. But they always go a little bit iffy when they're spawning. So just plod away. Never lose your call. Just keep at your plan what you're doing. I've got a margin line, which I'll feed again in like another 10, 15 minutes. Just keep swapping about until hopefully this line shallow they'll come on it. But um, it's not it's not normal fishing what you normally catch. You normally catch on the bottom on caster. You might get a few carp, a lot of barbel, and it's it's just not not happening at the moment. But hopefully it will. And a couple of foul lookers. Just need a few fish to start feeding, get the others to start feeding. So never lose your patience, just stick at what you're doing. Oh, and uh, hopefully at some point in the match your plan will come together. Right, as you see, I've just tip-exed my pole section. I'm going to try it literally halfway up the shelf because there's colour coming up. The fish have got to be there somewhere just to try and put something in there until they really turn on. So I'm thinking barbel. They may be up and down that shelf. So let's just see where they are. Let's have a look. I'll just get out of my mind. I'm just thinking about it. I want to get out of my mind. They are. I'm a firm believer, if you think of something, do it. Don't think about it and then afterwards think, oh, I wish I'd done so and so. Just do it. So I'm going to mark the deck, roughly have a go at that and just see what happens. Then I can adjust the rig to how I want it and how I feel it'll be right, shotted and that. I might even put, have to put another rig on, maybe a 4x14 because that's a 4x16.
All right, let's have a look. Let's see if, if it's right this way. Well, that will go straight away. Some that do it. And I would say barbel. But I love it to be carp, but I'd say barbel. I just love that shelf, the barbel. Having, as you can see. Oh, it's a carp. Unreal. Look at that. That thought totally different. It's a carp. Just that change, just unreal. Lovely common. Right down its throat. But it may have been a lucky fish, so let's go out there again before I shorten that line or anything on there. See, just I just thought about that, but I was thinking barbel. It's got me a fish. So just sitting there thinking, oh, what can I do? So think about something, just try it, do it. And I've just proved it there. You see, when I farm my cars in, you can see they spread from before my float now, which was where I originally put it, because I thought I'd get barbel there in that deeper water. But obviously they're pushing up the shelf. I've just seen a carp over there, so I've got to get the shallow ring out quick. Quick enough. I see him. Must be another one there with him. But yeah, but what I was saying, there's just that red spreading from the bottom of the shelf up. And they could be anywhere on that shelf because the bait's lying there, but it's just finding where they are. And I'll just add that one straight away, whether I'd get another one, but like I say, I've just seen one shallow. So I thought I'd just shoot out shallow and have a go. But I was thinking barbel, not a carp. Catch a carp like that. Right, I'm just going to go back out on that huh, on that deeper line where I nicked a fish straight away and then I see that fish shallow but I've had him and I can't see any more there now. So just go and see if I can catch until they do start feeding or if they do, just in that deeper water but up the shelf more. fish in there for the depth but it'll give me an indication if there's fish there. I had that one carp first put in but that don't mean it's because it's just a lucky fish but if you think of something just do it, have a go, get out your mind. I expect to catch barbel there, even close to me right in the deeper water but Gee, shouldn't it shouldn't happen like that, should it? It went again though, didn't it?
speed was going through the water either. No. Oh, and again, look, no indication. That's like going up the shelf, that is. <laughs> like that, hmm. I might just shorten that down rather than put a... Right. Yeah, yeah. I think that's carp and all again. Come on then, you've just won him for a second time. Missed a bite yeah. and you've had another one. Well look, I've hooked another one. I missed a bite and I've hooked another one. So I'm sure there's a carp. I'm expecting to catch barbel there, but you know, just probably they just don't want to come up. Yeah, I mean, that's a carp again. And that's in the mouth. So it's these little changes that can make the difference between foul looking fish and, yeah. you know, and then getting, them, getting it right. Mm, might be a barbel. Fine, different now. Carp again. Another carp in that deeper water. Yeah. Right, let's sort this rig out. Get it how I want it. Well. There's a fish over there shallow, so I'll do that in a minute. Come on, take it, take it. I know you're still there. Come on. I think there was two there then. Come on, carpies. I know you're there. Go back because I had that one quick. Let's go on that deep one. Sort that rig out. Something happens while I'm watching it. I'll shoot over there. And...
Gee whiz. Yeah, but it might be a barbel. That, I don't think that's a carp. Can't keep catching carp there, surely. Beautiful barbel, beautiful. Well, we're halfway through the match, and I've probably just found out where they want to be feeding, but hopefully I can get them shallow. Um, I've had a barbel and two carp now, and missed two bites, three quarters up the shelf, not at the bottom of it. They're probably in about three and a half, four foot of water. But it's still on me overfeed, but it's, it's still not mad, but it's better than, than anywhere else. So I'm gonna plod away at this a bit, and if I see one over on that shallow line top, I'll just pick the shallow rig up and go over. Let's just see if I can nick a few fish on this, because there's not loads coming out. Um, that's all to play for. I've got seven carp, a tench, a barbel and a couple of perch. So, well, I'm going to carry on feeding like I am, as if I'm catching shallow, and fish just where well, I'm just down the shelf now. And hopefully, because we're just past two and a half hours in, hopefully it can only get better. I'm hoping I can catch a few more shallow over, but where it's so hot, maybe not, but I'm getting a lot more indication where I'm fishing now, so, I mean, it's better now already, but uh, whether it will get any better, I'm sure it will. All, all commercial matches get better the last last couple of hours, the last part of the match, so I've got my margin still, I'm about to feed that again in a minute, but I went down there, it was just pert, so. and it took it but there's not so many fish over there to make them compete so it just becomes harder and harder trying to catch them they should be starting to feed now
I'll have a nice come con and that's how they put me in the keep net. <laughs> I'm going that deep with you still, but that was stuck. That was stuck locking over there in a minute. We might have to. Shut off. Yeah. You say you can't draw. Right, with the last hour, I've just had a common out the margin, but you don't normally catch lots in the margin. But I see a swell down there because there's some lilies there, but at the same time, I've seen some fish over shallow, so I've gone back over shallow just to rest that a minute because the fish went all through me inside down there. Um, I stepped up the elastic to go in next time, so I should get, be able to get them out a bit easier. But I can't believe this ain't going over. Every time there's a couple of fish there and I go over, they just spook. I think it's just where it's so calm, flat, and there's not enough there, but there was about three or four then, which is a lot. It's most I've seen all match, but just won't, just won't take it. The only thing I'm thinking to try and win the section, I think, it takes 23 and 24. I'm not sure about fill on five, which are the best three pegs in this section, if they are, um, how many they've had. But uh, Darren on 27, he's had, there's three big fish in here over 10 pounds, he's had two of them, he's greedy, absolutely greedy. But, uh, that's two fish for 20 pound. So he's done all right, but I think Pete Archer's winning, he's got about 30 carp in the top corner where the wind's blowing. Doing his usual maggot trick, feeding three gallon of maggot in five hours. Oh, he's got that sus, Pete. Oh, I've got ten fish, a barbel, a couple of tench, some perch. So I'm going to have another look down that margin now and just see what happens. So I've gone over and nothing, they're just not, not responding. So I'm just going to swap between over there and the margin this last down, see if I can nick another couple of fish. but. It's not the head of fish here to catch. And my left on third, he's had, I think he's had one carp, he's had a few tench. It's not really happening. Because it's a hot, lovely and hot, lovely weather. It's going to be overcast now, so. This last down, she's going to swap through and over there, shallow and down the margin there, which I'm going to have a look at now. Nothing's happening here. I'll come away and I'll see fish over there again. Well, there's a lot of activity down here in this marge. It swelled when I put the maggots in there, which we definitely can't, but trying to get them to take. Unbelievable. Come on, fish. Buried then nothing, which I think was a liner. And the same time as I come down here, they're slurping over there where I've been feeding the casters. Go 
You can see there now. Oh, I have Yeah, it's just come a bit overcast now and we're in the last down. I've had two in two puts, so I had one down the edge. So maybe I might just get a couple this last next 40 minutes, but I can't win the section now. You know, they always leave it till late, but they just haven't been the head of fish there. It's all about enjoying it. The weather's been lovely. Yeah. I haven't got to feed as much now. I see that sun in, I've had another one straight away again. It's unreal. Just a slight change in the weather. And I know it's like the last hour and fish start to feed. But um, we'll see. It's been so hot today, though. Oh, <laughs> didn't want that one anyway. Was oh, so you can release? Don't give up, do they? Oh, yeah. Oh, 
No. Oh, I hate that number. I hate that number. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? Last 20 minutes, best part of the best part of the match, and I'm hardly feeding anything now. This is how it should have been after about an hour, but this weather's changed, a bit of a ripple. And I'm getting one a bung. I'm probably about 10 minutes left. <laughs> Barbel. <laughs> Beautiful barbel. Uh, 
I'm real, ain't I? Not long, Darren. Huh? Not long. Right. Okay. Well, there we are. Fish on the whistle. That was mad. That last 15, 20 minutes went from low figures to 17 carp. Shows how quick you can catch when they're there. So let's get packed up and see what I've got. Well, as you saw there, part of my catch, I had um, seven pound of silvers, some barbel, one real nice barbel, probably about three pound, three and a half pound, half a dozen little tench, few perch, um, had 17 carp in the end, and the last 25 minutes were the best part of the match. Um, I was feeding a bit less, but they were there, uh, they were feeding, it was literally one of bung as quick as I could get in, which you would have seen, uh, ended up with 64 pounds, but I knew after halfway I was going nowhere because round to the left pegs 23 and 24 that are in my section and they had 70, 80 pounds. Uh, Darren James, uh, the organiser of the match, he was on 27. There's only three carp over 10 pounds in this lake that were put in and he caught two of them. I just think he's greedy. <laughs> but no, well done Darren. Um, yeah, so to my right though going up I had a gap to peg five. Phil Spry on peg five. I beat Phil and I beat peg seven, eight, nine, ten, and then James Strachan on peg 11, come third in match, 151 pound. Then Pete to his right in the corner, 13. Uh, Pete had, Pete Archer had 200 pound and three ounces, and he qualifies today. Brilliant weight on the day. But the fish definitely had followed the wind up that end. There was, some, there was another 100 pound up there, I think another 80 pound. Um, and then Tay was on peg, 22 and he hasn't caught 100 pounds before and has 170 pounds he's come second in the match so he wins his section uh, really pleased for him brilliant weight uh, taylor that was today great weight got him fishing caster's shallow he's been a pellet man i think he'd be hooked on banded caster now so it's been a good match some good weights but it's been very hot as you've seen which does tend to affect it, it pushes a fish in different areas where they don't normally want to be but there was no hardly any fish here when we first started it was hard um, thinking back on my match, I should have maybe fished just up the shelf a little bit more. Um, I think that's it really, I mean you can do so many things, but as you saw, if you think to do something in a match, try it. So I thought, I wonder if I had just a bit further up the shelf, re-plumbed up, went half a metre up the shelf, had two carps straight away as you saw, just making slight changes, but that could have carried on, but it didn't. But another day that could be the most important thing, just making them changes, never sit there and think, I wonder if that would have worked. It's no good afterwards. Give it a go, it only takes a few minutes. Just give it a try, because it was still on the overspill of my caster of what I tried. You know, it's just something you might think to do. Just try it, you might be thinking, I wonder if the method feeder will work, ain't it? Yeah, I'll, I'll give it a go. Just have a couple of chucks. You know, if you've got a good chuck, it might work. Just something different that might just catch you more fish.
but I hope you enjoyed it. I've had a lovely day, it's been a bit hot. Could have drawn better, but it's always good crack to be out with the lads and catch a few fish. I'll catch you on your bank next time I'm out.